everybody, I am Jay Shady, and you are listening to The Voice of Reason. So this show tonight, we're all from Brooklyn, New York. Of course, you know, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, Barclays Center. So the question is, did I go to tonight's show? And the answer is, yes, indeedy, I did. I went to tonight's show. Um, and I've got to say, this one was a stinker. Make no doubt about it, this was just a horrible, horrible fucking show. From start to finish, I think easily, probably the worst event that I've ever been to. And, you know, I went to WrestleMania 29 and that was pretty fucking shitty. I have went to um, previous uh, PG ever Raws that were pre uh, pretty shitty. But this one, I was not expecting this. This shit was phoned in from the start, man. Just a horrible, horrible experience. I mean, even the crowd, even the crowd tonight, this wasn't a New York crowd because we had, within like the first 30 minutes, all the energy just sucked out of us. Just like, you know, all the life drained out of, out of us by some demon or something. You know, we were just fucking zombies by 10 o'clock. Everybody's just laying down in their seats. I was laying down in my seat, and we were just not very fucking vocal tonight. Dude. I don't know if it came, on, came off on TV like that, but from a first-hand experience, the crowd was fucking dead silent, and there were times where you could have literally heard a fucking pin drop. And to do that in a New York crowd, that's... You know, a big fucking uh, mission to accomplish, and WWE accomplished that mission tonight. Now, uh, since this is a live event type of review, I will um, go back to doing a segment by segment breakdown for this uh, review only. So, um, let's talk about this one. Uh, let's get this over with because I'm pretty fucking tired right now. Um, you get the show starting off with uh, Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie McMahon comes out and cuts a fucking boring ass promo um, talking about uh, Daniel Bryan isn't going to be there tonight, which fucking sucks because he wasn't there tonight. Um, and, uh, you know, just doing the same old fucking shit, dissing the fans, saying that Triple H is going to uh, kick Bryan's ass and all that, and, you know, uh, promoting what happened last week with the Triple H beat, beat down. Then Randy Orton comes out. Randy Orton um, starts uh, telling Stephanie that, uh, you know, he's going to beat Batista and Triple H when Triple H beats Daniel Bryan. He's going to be the champion. You know, all this just shit. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna win. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. We're not fucking going anywhere with this shit, you know? I mean, add some fucking variety to your promos. I'm getting sick of these fucking promos, which is just plain old bland boring shit which is you know I'm gonna beat this guy I'm gonna win this match you know there's nothing actually fucking said there's nothing mean meaningful said in these promos to advance anything it's all just you know bragging that's all this shit is then Batista comes out so you have not one not two but three of the most fucking boring pathetic fucking characters come out and start off raw and the most boring guy is Randy Orton you know of all of them and you have Batista, probably the most hated guy right now. And Stephanie, who's just not a good fucking promo person. She's really not. She's a bad actor. And this was just... I mean, this is how you start off Raw with, you know, these fucking three who people can't fucking stand. It just didn't make sense to me. And Batista's... Um, you have his mic getting cut off. This whole fucking night started out as a mess. And it proceeded to be a mess throughout the whole fucking show. It was just... Like, they didn't even care. They didn't even give any fucking effort with this thing. So his mic is fucking up. He gets a mic and this is Stephanie. Says Randy Orton's drooling all over Stephanie. And Stephanie's been drooled on many times before. What do you fucking do? Uh, Stephanie slaps Batista. Batista spears Randy Orton or some shit. And that's the end of the segment. But it went on 20 fucking minutes long. Maybe not 20 minutes, but you know, like 10, 15 minutes. So this was just... A very, very boring way to start off the show. And to me, this right here automatically just sucked all the energy out of the crowd and, you know, um, took us out of it. It really did to start off a show like this. You know, that's something. Um, then you get Christian versus Alberto Del Rio versus Ziggler versus Sheamus. 
And uh, this was just a boring fucking match for the most part. Fatal 4-Way, pretty fucking boring. Um, it gets, picks up towards the end, but it takes a long fucking time to get there. Um, the only guy people cared for in this match was Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Christian gets the win. So at least it's not going to be a fucking WrestleMania match because nobody gives a shit about Christian at this point. Okay, Christian, you know, just... What are you doing? You know, it's he's not a fucking name. He's not anywhere near the caliber of his uh, partner Edge. You know, he's just there. But, you know, you don't care that he's there. You know, it, there's no, like, you know, nostalgia value anymore of him being there. It's just, come on. I don't give a fuck that Christian is getting a title shot for the Intercontinental Championship. Like I said, it's going to, at least not going to be at WrestleMania. It's going to be on main event tomorrow. So, yeah, th that match was a number one contendership for the Intercontinental title. Christian won. Then you get Sin Cara versus Damian Sandow. Holy fucking shit. How Damian Sandow has fucking fallen. Jesus Christ. You know, of course, Sandow gets hot. Does a little feud with John Cena and gets fucking buried. Buried. I mean, this guy used to be one of the mo more unique guys, you know, when he was hot. You know, he had good fucking promos. He had a cool look. But they just, you know, stripped him down to just being a bland motherfucker. He cut his hair. His, you know, uh, whole demeanor, everything about him is just jobber. It's just ridiculous. It really is with this fucking glass ceiling bullshit. Enough with this stupid shit already. Why do you not evolve as a company? Why do you choose to just bury and uh, ruin all your future superstars for the sake of somebody, somebody who's been there, you know, already almost, you know, 10 years, who's like almost uh, fucking 40 years old, just to, you know, feed their ego, please their fucking low self-esteem that they have. It makes no sense why you do this. You're ruining your own future. You get Sid Carr versus Damian Sandow, Scooby-Doo fucking comes out. You know, that was just, <laughs> you know... The, the theme of the night is just stupid fucking bullshit. Just boring, stupid filler bullshit. You get Scooby-Doo coming out with the mystery van and all this shit. Um, Sin Car beats Damian Sandow in like less than a fucking minute. Thankfully, Scooby-Doo didn't have a lot to do. But just the fucking mere fact that Scooby-Doo was there was fucking enough to, you know, disgust anybody. And just make you wince. And think about where the fuck this company has, you know, where they've been and how they got where they are now. Then you get uh, Ryan Baxel versus Los Matadors. And by this point, if you weren't sucked out from the opener, if you didn't get sucked out from the Scooby-Doo shit, this is the time where you were like, I'm fucking signing off on this fucking show. This was another like 20 second fucking match. Uh, Los Matadors win because the Shield comes out and distracts Rybaxel, and um, the Shield beat up Rybaxel. You know, just fucking bullshit, man. Nobody gives a fuck about this. Um, then you get uh, the the Triple H exclusive in ring interview, and that's what it was. It was like an interview that you get on the fucking app. Or that, you know, you go to WWE.com to look at some bonus fucking footage from Raw. This isn't shit that you put on your fucking prime time show. This was boring as hell. I mean, another thing where nothing of substance, nothing substantial, nothing of significance was said. You know, just Triple H dissing the fans and talking about, you know, deal with it and best for business and all that shit. You know, just saying that he's going to beat Daniel Bryan and all that shit. And, you know, just the, uh, he could win the title. It's just... I mean, this was boring as fuck. This really was. This is just a horrible show. It really is. I cannot stress enough how bad this fucking show was. Easily one of the worst Raws I've seen, you know, for a while. This ranks there with the last couple years of worst Raws I've ever seen. Especially the fact that I was fucking there. Um, yeah, he talks about the reality era. Maybe he's going to start the reality era. What fucking reality era? He's talking about, um, it's not about people who are living in their past glory, you know? What are you talking about? You're the fucking guy reliving your past glory. This whole promo just made no fucking sense. Stupid shit. 
Then you get Fandango versus Cody Rhodes. Um, this match, you could have heard a fucking pin drop. This is the one. This is the one where I realized how dead the crowd was. I mean, nobody was fucking saying anything. Nobody was talking to anybody. Everybody was just sitting fucking silent. You know, it, it seemed like a fucking library, not a fucking uh, arena. You know, it was ridiculous. How do you do this? You get, you know, 17,000 New Yorkers, fucking New Yorkers, and you could hear a fucking pin drop. It's like, you know, it sounds like the fucking Pope just died and everybody's having a moment of silence. This is entertainment? I don't think so. Um, Cody Rhodes gets the win in like two minutes tops. Fuck that shit. Then you get um the Hulk Hogan and Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Joe Mang Manganiello. I'm not, I don't know how to say his last name, but basically Hulk Hogan just and all them just promoting sabotage and you know just talking about fucking nothing. But uh, me and my friends were trying to you know make uh, fun of our time and we were uh, every time Joe. This Joe Manganiello guy was mentioned, or he spoke, we would uh, give him like a huge fucking pop. We would go berserk whenever they mentioned Joe, referenced Joe, or Joe spoke. You know, just to give us something to do. You know, it's ridiculous. Like, as a fan being there, you have to make up little fun fucking games for yourself in order to have a good fucking time. You can't rely on the show to do it yourself. So whenever Joe was mentioned, we'd fucking cheer like, you know, it was Austin coming back or something. You know, that's the state we were in at this time. Then Miz comes out and, you know, starts insulting all the guys. Uh, all of them get physical. Hogan throws Miz out of the ring and, you know, whoop the fucking do This segment made no fucking sense. You know, yeah, it was good to see Hogan live, but this didn't fucking do anything. He didn't say anything. Like, seriously, this is another thing that you put on your fucking app. You don't... Put all this bullshit on your prime time show. Especially two weeks away from WrestleMania. I mean, come the fuck on. Then you get Titus O'Neil versus Big Show. And this is the one where I decided to um, go get some popcorn. Go get some uh, Coca-Cola. You know, I call it quits with this shit. I don't need to watch the fucking Big Show. The Big Show. I'm one of the most boring fucking people ever. Ever. In the fucking WWE. This guy's been relevant in... Since like fucking 1999, 1998 when he was the fucking giant. Fuck the big show. Get him out of here. Don't want to see him anymore. Um, then you get Luke Harper versus uh, John Cena. Um, and this match was just really boring. Let's face it. It was just John Cena getting beat down for like 50 fucking minutes. Um, a lot of rest holds. So many fucking rest holds. Luke Harper had some good moves uh, here and there spurst in. But way too many fucking rest holds for anybody to give a shit. Um, I mean, come on. Why is wrestling so goddamn boring? Like, I get it. You want to be a PG show, but why can't you have good fucking like, quality and be PG at the same time? Why does PG mean the wrestling quality has to get dumbed down and suck? It doesn't fucking make sense. It really doesn't. I mean, it just mind boggles me. PG doesn't mean you can't do fucking wrestling moves anymore. All you can do is lay in the ring. They're just hearkening back to like Bruno San Martino's type of wrestling where there's like three moves in the match and everything is rest holds. Come the fuck on, man. Um, this match ends with a DQ screwy type of finish. The lights go out and um, the lights come back on and John Cena's... Um, uh, his arms are tied around the ring ropes and they put the gold mask on his face. Kind of cool to see that. But, you know, this is all just going to lead to Bray Wyatt job it to John Cena. So it's, you know, not like I could get pumped from that. Then you get Naomi versus AJ Lee. Wasn't even watching this match. Was checking uh, sports scores. Um, I don't know who won this. But afterwards, Vicky Guerrero comes out, who I haven't seen in fucking forever. And she announces that AJ Lee is going to defend her title against Naomi and Cameron and Tamina and Nikki Bella and Brie Bella. And I don't give a shit. How about that? And shut the fuck up. And fucking kill me already. I'm fucking going to sleep, you know? It's just this fucking shit did not end. 
She just named every fucking jobber diva, so AJ Lee's gonna face the fucking world at WrestleMania, I guess, or whenever this match happens. Who gives a shit? Then you get um, the, the highlight of the night, and the fact that the highlight of the night was a video package is pretty fucking sad. We get the announcement that Razor Ramon, Scott Hall, part of the NWO for life, baby, is uh, going into the Hall of Fame. Very happy for Scott. Great fucking moment. You know, he's battled a lot of personal demons. He's battled a lot. And for him to be in such a good place right now, thanks to DDP and the, the boys, um, that's great. I'm really happy for him. You know, a guy who I really used to like, you know, when he was an active uh, uh, guy on the roster, whether it be WWF, whether it be WCW, he was always entertaining. Great catchphrases, really knew how to work a crowd. Just a really fine, cool fucking dude, you know? Really cool guy. Exuded machismo, like they said. Um, so yeah, kudos to fucking Razor Ramon. Um, the Hall of Fame looks like it's gonna be the best one ever, and it looks like it looks better than fucking WrestleMania. It really does. Um, I'm actually excited to watch see the Hall of Fame. Um, then you get the uh, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose versus Jack Swagger and Cesaro. You know this was the most decent match, but it was still slow. It was still boring, and even if it was decent. We were fucking drained, man. We were fucking sucked out. We were fucking done with the show at this point as a crowd. You know? And, and, may I mention, the weird fucking thing. This is where the weird part comes in. That took my mind off of the rest of the show. Now, for this sh show, I had shitty fucking seats. I was way on top. I was in the upper level, you know? I was basically refurnishing the roof, doing some fucking uh, ceiling painting. I was way fucking up there. And I hear a commotion to the right of me. And one row back and a few seats down, I look and I see Bob Backlund. Bob Backlund with a suspenders and a button down sitting on the steps by himself. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? This is just so fucking weird. It was legitimately Bob Backlund high in the fucking uh, nosebleed seats with us. In the same fucking section as me. And he's by himself. No security or anything. You know, one guy goes up to him. Other than that, he's just watching the show by himself. It was the oddest fucking thing. And, you know, it you know, surpassed everything else about the show. That was the focal point of the night for me. Why the fuck was Bob Backlund up with us? Up in the nose, please. I mean, the guy could have been backstage. The guy, you know, could have been front row. And then, just as mysteriously as he arrives, he disappears. He's a very fucking mysterious man, Bob Backlund. He really is. I'm very, you know, concerned. What the fuck was that about? But yeah, so I couldn't even pay attention to this match. Because how are you going to pay attention when you're in the nosebleeds, you look to your right, and fucking Bob Backlund is sitting there. It was like a fucking Twilight Zone. Um, the, sh the Shield get the win. Um, after the match, uh, they beat down Cesaro, powerbomb him through a table. Cool spot. But yeah, Bob Backlund overshadows everything, pretty much. Um... And then I believe we get the main, the main event. Oh, uh, also before this, you get a little announcement. Kane and the Outlaws come out. Outlaws are in suits with Kane. And uh, Kane says that the Shield are going to be in a six-man tag at WrestleMania with the Outlaws and Kane himself. I mean, you know, this is just fucking shit. This really is. This is just stupid. I mean, the undercard for WrestleMania is not looking pretty, folks. Um... I mean, the Shield. This should be a triple threat match amongst all three guys. You're going to have it sooner or later. Probably at Extreme Rules or the pay-per-view after that. Why don't you fucking do it at WrestleMania? At least you get a good, very fucking interesting match. It would get a lot of interest. A huge undercard match. Instead, you get a fucking filler garbage, recycled, you know, tight match that nobody cares about. Nobody wants to see the Shield versus the Outlaws and over the fucking hill. This man is like 20 times over the hill, Kane. Nobody gives a fuck about Kane. Kane and Big Show are the most two worthless guys in the company, in my opinion. And, you know, you have Kane, like, having these weird matches where he's in dress pants and uh, uh, dress shoes, it just looks horrible. It looks goddamn horrible. Okay, you want to have Kane? Have him just be, you know, a, um, 
uh, a, a character, you know, one of those backstage characters, not an active wrestler. And out of nowhere, the Outlaws are involved in this feud. They're not feuding with the Usos anymore. It's just like, I don't know, man. It's just all over the place. It makes no sense, this shit. And you have the Shield in such a meaningless fucking storyline, in such a meaningless match at WrestleMania, where you could have had, you know, one of the bigger undercard matches of the last few years with a triple threat match, man. You're missing something. You really are. By going this stupid fucking route, Kane. Fuck Kane, seriously. Then you get the main uh, event segment. Um, Brock Lesnar and Undertaker decided to show up for work. Hey, why the fuck not, you know? I guess we're employed to WWE, so might as well come around once in a while. Why not, I guess. Um, Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar come out. Um, uh, Paul Heyman, um, you know, same old shit. Talks about, uh, oh, my name is Paul Heyman, this is uh, Brock Lesnar, and he's facing The Undertaker. Oh, we didn't fucking know that. Thanks for telling us. Um, about to do a recap of the storyline, like we've heard week in and week out. We get what's going on. We understand Brock Lesnar is facing The Undertaker, and nothing fucking else is happening. You don't have to fucking say it every other fucking, not every other week, every week. Um, Brock Lesnar takes the mic and says... He wants to fight The Undertaker right now. He's here to fight. And he calls out The Undertaker. Um, Undertaker's music. Not, not Undertaker's music. I'm sorry. The lights go off and you hear this fucking music. This fucking music. It's like Pope. You know, the, you know the, the music that he has when he does those special entrances. Like that Vatican type of like... Um, oh, you know those voices type music. with the, the, like, It's like a Vatican church. Pope fucking music. Anyway... I'm, I'm going off the fucking edge here. I'm so fucking tired. Repeating myself. Um, they do this. The druids come out and they're holding a casket. But this shit went on for it. It felt like 20 minutes. Probably was more like fucking 8 to 10 minutes. But it went on for a long time. Of them just bringing the casket out. Them leaving. And for like 8 fucking minutes. This This fucking music. Jesus Christ, I wanted to shoot myself. And you're like, all right, what's happening here? Um, so eight minutes go by. Brock Lesnar starts stepping on the casket, opens it. Nobody's there. Um, then um, after a while, um, uh, Undertaker comes out of the casket and um, he uh, uh, fights Brock Lesnar, they get into a brawl, which consists of, like, two punches and a clothesline outside of the ring, and boom, bada bing, bada boom, you're fucking done with the show. Just like that, you know? You have all this eight minutes buildup of them bringing out the casket, Undertaker's not in the casket, and then he appears in the casket, all for two punches and a clothesline. You know? Whoa! We advanced so much in this fucking storyline, you know? You have both of these guys here. Why not do something with them of fucking meaning? I mean, this whole show was just a fucking disaster. Fucking disaster, man. And um, then you get the dark main event, which was the Shield versus the Wyatts. And um, this was just a short match that ended in a screwy, cheap fucking finish with a DQ. So it's like you were constantly fucking bitch slapped throughout this whole fucking show. You couldn't even have a fucking clean, dark main event. You know, even that had to be shit. I mean, holy goddamn, did they bring out a bunch of fucking jobbers tonight. It's like they emptied, they poured out their whole fucking roster for no fucking reason. I mean, Fandango, Sin Cara, Vicky Guerrero... You know, just people that you, uh, Damien Sandow, just people that you don't even see hardly ever. And they're here, two weeks before WrestleMania. Los Matadors, I mean, what the fuck was this? Seriously, what was this? It was just a fucking jobber show. You know, straight up. Just a bunch of fucking shitty short matches. A bunch of guys who you don't even... <laughs> that you forgot were hired with the WWE, you know, seemed like they were on hiatus. They just come back and, you know, it was just fucking bad. It was just bad. You know, I can't think of any witty things to say right now because I'm really fucking tired. It's two in the morning and um, yeah, 
But uh, God fucking damn it. This show sucked. Big balls. Big hairy fucking balls. Um, worst event I've ever been to, I believe. If I'd give it a rating, I'd give it a 1 out of fucking 10. Best part of the night, a video package of Razor Ramon. You know, it's always so many times how it is when I go to live events is, you know, you're watching the show and then they show the video packages during commercial breaks of like, you know, past raw moments and you're like, God damn, man. Uh, it just makes you depressed. You're like, what the fuck happened? You know, I have to look and watch this shit. So there you go. There's my live event review. I haven't had a lot of luck with live events uh, recently. WrestleMania 29. The last Raw before this I went to wasn't uh, good, but it was a fucking hundred times better than this. The last Raw I went to was fucking gold. The gold standard compared to this. This was downright shit. And I don't think anybody could good, put a good spin on this show and say there's fucking positive about the show. This was horrible. The fucking crowd was dead. Was fucking jobbers after jobbers. Just meaningless promos. Bullshit matches. And once again, that fucking crowd, man. How do you take all the energy and rambunctiousness and um, voice, the loud voice, out of a New York crowd? Only the WWE could put a New York fucking crowd to sleep. So yeah, there you go. There's my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Alright, I'm Jay Shady, the voice of reason. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you later.